Hey everybody, welcome to episode 20 of the Cuckoo Attack. I am Chad Hembrock. With me as always... Patrick Hughes here. we are coming to you straight from the next gen, which was almost a month ago <laughs> because that's how long our last podcast was. <laughs> over a month ago. Our, our, our last podcast was over a month yeah, ago. Yeah, <laughs> so, so we originally... I, I think we had the intention of recording at the start of the launch of this next gen, but... Uh, as you can tell, we got distracted. So. Yeah, we've uh, we've all we've both been busy with uh, some next gen games, and uh, or even for me, more uh, previous gen games on the next gen console. So, um, so yeah, let's just <laughs> jump right into it. Um, games that we've been playing. We've got a lot of games to talk yeah. about. Um, in fact, uh, some games we were playing even before the uh, next gen started. Maybe we should start there. Sure. So. Um, <laughs> Why don't you kick it off with uh, Pick Cross, since you were the one that brought that into my life. <laughs> yes. So we, there's been much, much more Pick Cross still. I think we previously mentioned I've been playing Mario's Pick Cross, and I finally convinced Chad to jump on it as well. Uh, it's amazing. So in case you forget or ha haven't heard yet, Mario's Pick Cross is on the Super Nintendo uh online app for switch so you can play it for free you can look up a tutorial video of how to play and it's totally worth it because you don't really need to know japanese to enjoy yeah. it um and yeah sudoku meets my minesweeper just but with like funny pictures it's just so addicting to just oh, i'm gonna just do a quick puzzle and then like 20 minutes later like oh just one more puzzle i, I know i've done eight but <laughs> yeah it's and, you know it, it punishes you if you get it wrong but you um you know but it's pretty quick to jump back into and um if you do end up getting a game over um it's it's fun though I, i'm really enjoying it uh i played i'm almost done with mario like so there's mario pick cross and then there's wario pick cross and the difference between them is Mario, your timer counts down from 30 minutes, and then you get um, incremental time deductions for errors. So it'll be like two, four, and then it's like eight. And then if you get like two or three eights in a row, you're pretty much done. Um, mm -hmm. Or I guess two eights. Um, so with that said, when you play Wario Picross, there's the timer goes up. And there's no error like it doesn't tell you if you got an error it doesn't deduct your score but basically it makes it harder because if you got it wrong then your whole puzzle is going to be wrong as you get towards the end you're, you have to like work backwards or just start over because you're like where did i go yeah wrong? so um <laughs> so i played it and i showed it to my wife who i knew would love it because she loves logic games and she completely beat mario's Picross. And now she's on level seven of Wario's Picross, and she's she's about to oh beat gosh. it. I think she said she said she's going to be beating it tonight. So, so she's like three <laughs> levels away from beating the entire game, um, which means I'm going to have to buy some of the uh, was it S5, S6, X7, whatever they are. Uh, so yeah, there, there's for Switch. There's more Picross games. They're all labeled S for Switch. So there's Picross S1, mm -hmm. 2, 3, 4, 5. I think 5 okay. is the latest one. I thought it started out, higher, like... but okay, yeah. So so yeah, I know they yeah. were just on sale. I think I missed that sale, but... Um... Yeah, I did pick up one of them, and I have been playing a lot of... I'm actually like 100 puzzles <laughs> nice. into it now. Yeah. So... It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so I'm getting close yeah, to Yeah, so if you it. like logic puzzle games, that's, that's a must-have. It's great. I really enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's thank you for sh for for telling me to get into that. So it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's a free game. Yeah, well you know, it it's, it's free, <laughs> and like I said, you know, my my wife really likes it, so um, it's it's yeah. always fun to play. With. I, I I actually really like the Mario one because I don't know. I feel like it has more of a sense of humor. A lot of the pictures that you end up doing, like I remember the worst one with you end up making like a telephone pole and there's a little dog and the little dog like walks yeah. up and starts peeing on it and i'm just like what? It's, it's so silly sometimes yeah, it's... Or, or like the person on the escalator and they're just like waving up in the animation afterwards yeah, as they like look... climb up it's a shame that there's <laughs> so so one thing i've noticed and i showed you tonight is that it's called mario's pit cross and there's like no reference to mario throughout the entire game except for <laughs> in the background of each level there might be like it'll be like a big version of like mario in the background yeah, yeah, or yeah. peach 
on that level, yeah, select, level screen. select screen. So that's yeah. about it, though, until tonight on level, I think it's on level 7 of Wario. My wife was like, hey, this guy's in Mario, right? She's like, it's the little cloud guy. And I was like, it's Lakitu. There he is. And so, <laughs> yeah, so that's like the first Mario character that's shown up in the game so far. There was a mole earlier, too, in one of the levels she did. And I was thinking if it was from Mole Mania, I, I don't, I don't know, because I was like that'd be a good reference. And, and was it Monty Moore or anything? I don't like think that? so. No, because it was more okay. like it had this like, it almost looked like Crash Bandicoot eyes, like our Crash Bandicoot nose. It was like kind of like out. That does kind of sound That's like. That's kind of what I thought. I kind of want to Google um, it. <laughs> and Mole Mania probably would have came out around that time, because I think Mole Mania was like '93. I don't know when Picross came out, um, but yeah, here I go on a tangent. <laughs> Talking about, um, but uh, yeah, it, it kind of like I thought that's what it was at first when I saw it. I was like, oh, but it doesn't have glasses. That was it. It didn't have glasses. It actually just had like the big like crash eyes kind of. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's it's great. Play it for sure. Check it out. Um, it's really good. Uh, so then, like, another game, I guess I'll go ahead and talk here, because uh, right after our last podcast, I started Luigi's Mansion 3. For the Like, I played it, like, the year it came out. <laughs> so, like, last... <laughs> you played it for, like, 20 minutes, or maybe, like, an yeah, hour. Yeah, I played I maybe <laughs> an hour. Like, Patrick came up one night, and we played it, and then I told him to go home because I didn't feel good. <laughs> and uh, and then I never touched the game again. I just never got into it. So I finally booted that up like the weekend of Halloween, and um, that game's awesome. <laughs> it's so good. I'm, I'm yes. so disappointed in myself that I slept on it for a year. Um, you know, I bought it the day it came out. I actually like went to a Best Buy that I was just happened to be by. I was like, oh, let me go get Luigi's Mansion real quick because it's you know it's out. And, uh, yeah, that game's amazing. I had such a good time playing it. Each level was so much fun. Um, just, just the puzzles, the, the animation was great. Like, I thought that was probably one of the prettiest games I've played on Switch. Like, yeah, that is probably <laughs> the most gorgeous game I've seen on so the Switch good, yet. so <laughs> good, dude. Like, in those, those, like, movie cutscenes and stuff that they had in it were just, yeah. like... Dude, it, it gets me excited for a Mario movie, just watching, like, the quality of that animation. It was awesome, dude, and, like, just the the personalities of all the ghosts and um, mm. finding where the gems were throughout the game. So, I actually, like, yeah, so between our last podcast and before the PS5 came out, I... 100% of that game, so that's that's pretty much what I've done since then. I, I was having a blast watching a, a lot of the game. I didn't watch the whole, you played the whole thing, but that, the parts I did, I was like, this is just yeah. so great. I'm just reliving it yeah, through I you. I should have. I need to start <laughs> streaming this stuff, but it's always like last minute, and then I'm, I'm like, eh. Ah. No. So. Oh, and then we did do a stream. Yeah. Oh yeah, so we'll get to that. We can, well, we can get to that now, I guess, since it's even after. I think that's, I think that's a good next game <laughs> to talk about. So in the lead up to waiting for next gen, I was like, all right, Chaz finished Luigi's Mansion 3. What do we do now? We still have like seven days left to go. <laughs> and so I got the itch to play Mario Maker again. And I was like, I want to make a world. I said I was going to make a world for the longest time here. I'm going to do it. So... I decided on my theme I was going to remake, kind of like a demake of Mario 64, but all with the Super Mario World style. The best. So, the, kind of shrunk down all the style. levels. <laughs> the only style. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you have to choose a style, it's definitely Mario yeah. World. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun making that. Had Chad play through it. You seem to have a great time yeah, it was playing awesome. it. It was a lot of fun. Um, it, it was... It was very well done. Um, I enjoyed the entire thing. We actually streamed it while Patrick was uh, talking, like he was watching me play it. But I stupidly had the desktop audio muted, no BS, so no game music or and no uh, voice from Patrick no, came through. No Patrick commentary. Yeah, so at that point I deleted the stream. It was it was 
very disappointing to play it for like two hours and then, you know, find out that nothing. So unfortunately, there. you can't see Chad's raw reactions. Uh, we we had some great times bad. too, because like TikTok clock was hilarious. Uh, I mean, we we were having a good time <laughs> playing through that, and um, Patrick was enjoying every moment of me struggling to platform. <laughs> so. I, I love I love seeing your creations kind of come to life and like how people react to it. It's just such yeah. a fun feeling as a game designer yeah. so um but i did re-record me playing through i know it's not quite the same <laughs> since i kind of know how it plays but you can check it out if you want on our channel um maybe use it as a walkthrough if you get stuck in any levels but try and play it raw if you can and enjoy it um yeah so he'll he'll put the then, uh, the world code in the uh description yeah yeah i'll put it in this description as well just in case um, but while on the topic of Mario Maker, <laughs> I just I was inspired to make one more level. He just wasn't finished. He couldn't be that nice. <laughs> I wasn't. And the only style of a Mario I hadn't made because I tried to make one of every style. I hadn't made a new Super Mario Brothers style Ooh. level yet because yeah, everyone He's hates the worst. it. So I was like, all right, if I'm going to make something that I hate, I should make it a level with hate as central theme. <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to make the most trolliest evil level I could possibly conceive of, and I called it the seemingly impossible level. And oh my gosh, it was such a beautiful creation when it was done. And I gave it to Chad. I was like, try this out. I want to see how you do. <laughs> that we probably should have streamed. So, we, oh no, we did stream that. I'm pretty sure did we streamed we? that. I thought we did. Maybe I'll we did. Maybe account. that we just shared it on Discord and Sadish like stopped talking to us. <laughs> I, I remember Sadish got bored. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I thought we streamed. Regardless, I was streaming it to you. So, um, yeah, I've played this level for two hours. <laughs> two hours straight of just... And he still didn't beat it in so that two hours. So he tried, Patrick multiple times was like, are you done, Chad? Did I break you? And I just kept going. And Patrick was... You could tell he's getting a little disappointed that I that he hadn't broke me yet. <laughs> and uh, I don't, there was something that made, that made you... Uh... Oh, it was that... <laughs> There's there were some invisible blocks that came into play and there were some mountain climbing <laughs> things that you had to do and it's it's it was fun for sure it was definitely definitely interesting um, it got to the point where I got lost I was like I did I felt I did everything that I could do and this and it just started re-exploring the entire level like what did I miss. S Where's the ruse? Something is hidden. I'm not yeah, I got to one part where I was like, all right, I made this jump, and now there's nowhere to go, so I don't know if I need to be here. And then, <laughs> and then I ended up like just looking everywhere, jumping everywhere, looking for hidden blocks. Could not figure out for the life of me what's going on, and to the point where I actually ended up posting the level in a Facebook group that I'm in, <laughs> and was like, I don't know if anyone still plays Mario Maker, but can somebody check this out? Because I'm just lost. And Patrick here wasn't going to give me any more hints until I, at least someone else beat the level. So, somebody. I was determined to keep this at 0%. Yeah, so somebody I posted it out to beat it and was was not Ugh. impressed with it. <laughs> was not impressed with it being a, a troll level. I'm impressed that he beat um, it. But really, what it came down to is he pointed at like he pointed out to me just a clue. Um, I'm not gonna give it here, so Patrick can put that in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to put the code for this level as well <laughs> in the description if anyone's brave enough <laughs> to try this. But one. once this guy gave me, he just gave me a clue. He didn't tell me what to do, and I was like, oh, okay. And then I figured it out. So it was just one thing I was completely overlooking, just due to not knowing how mechanics in the in the whole game overall work so i just wasn't thinking about it so um regardless it was it was fun it was it was definitely fun i'm glad that i was able to finally clear it now just to put it in his face that i beat his seemingly impossible level <laughs> just needed just needed a little push a little push yeah so i had my brother try it too and <laughs> 
It was just hilarious watching him, and he was like, 10 minutes, I'm done. <laughs> Meanwhile, two, <laughs> hours, late, two hours later. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think he got as far as going through the door, and then he was like, gotcha. nope. <laughs> yeah, so, but it was still, like, it was still fun, and I was I was determined to beat it, just because you, you made it for me to not beat. <laughs> <laughs> and and then the funny thing was when I posted it into this Facebook group, everybody there was like, "New Super Mario Brothers, Buh. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna play that." <laughs> and I was I had to tell everybody like, "Yeah, this was made to 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 be hate." <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted like the most annoying music, and that is definitely New ba, Mario ba, Brothers. Ba. <laughs> ba, ba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that uh, was it was cool though um so i think that pretty much wraps up our switch experience uh, yes our our pre next yeah. gen gaming until finally the day came we are here so we actually did get our devices on launch day which was kind of unexpected for, for me yeah because i did not i did not get any notifications until like the morning of yeah and i never got a <laughs> notification so i actually got a notification that mine was delayed um and it was delayed three weeks after i received it and i never got charged for it until like a week ago <laughs> so i was like <laughs> yeah we, we were hoping we weren't gonna get charged <laughs> like they didn't end up charging me until like a week after they were so disorganized. Yeah, I was really but... thinking that that <laughs> no something was going to be broken us. in the system, or they were going to ship me another one because it said delayed, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. But, uh, but anyway, we got it, and let's get into this. Um, I'm going to start it off with just saying the adaptive trigger controllers are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings it right into the first game that we both platinumed, and that is yes. Astro's Playroom. <laughs> the free pre-installed game that comes on every PS5, and it's definitely the first game that everyone should play if they get this yeah, system. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's essentially like Robot Mario Sunshine in a PlayStation environment. <laughs> it's it's really cool. <laughs> it is like the Sony Mario. Yeah, it, but it is it is deserving of that comparison because it is so polished yeah. and it's it so felt much fun. Really good. There was very little to complain about in it. Um, the my only complaint is it's yeah, too short. My only complaint is, <laughs> I wish it lasted yeah. longer because I loved it yeah, so it was much. Really, really good. Um, they they had like every reference to PlayStation throughout its entire lifespan, like. You, you collect these trophies that are, are what are artifacts? Artif yeah, artifacts. artifacts that are literally yeah. like <laughs> hardware items and random stuff from each generation. And there's PlayStation memory cards and controllers. And like multi taps and, and like, like yeah. <laughs> network adapter for PS2 and like even like these like weird like VMU. Like I didn't even know Sony had a VMU thing. It was a... Yeah, I totally forgot uh, at one point they Sony had made those like game show controllers that like voting yeah, buttons. Yeah, yeah, totally forgot about that too. <laughs> like all that stuff was just, I don't know, it was just really neat. Um, just going through the history of everything and like you'd find like game discs that were like based on popular games from the system, from the like each system. Yeah, <laughs> and um, like they they like modified them to like fit an Astrobot's world so it was like bot charted yeah. and stuff for like Uncharted and <laughs> the one was like Ico I think is what it was supposed to be but it was like Botco or something. It was just called Yeah it was bot. just bot but yeah. it was like it was like but the it, Ico but the, like, logo. The text was so like yeah, Ico, Ico, Ico like, whatever, you could yeah. tell. <laughs> but yeah I was like ha I was like I never even played that game but I know what it is. <laughs> Cause I used <laughs> I understood I worked that in a I worked in an electronics <laughs> shop when PS2 was out so it was like those things were, you know, I saw all those games. <laughs> so, the, like, even some of that random obscure stuff mm. was was fresh. Yeah. And, and the game is just littered with PlayStation references within the levels. Like, you see the little robots reenacting scenes and stuff as the other bots are, like, filming it. And there, there are probably, like, 
over a hundred different like PlayStation game references that they're doing. Every like little (laughs) reference area too. There's like objects around that are all like interact. Like everything's interactive. Like you can use (laughs) your, um, you know, you can just like touch everything, push everything in the game. And like for instance, like the crash one. It's like the little robot guys like pumping the air and doing the little like crash moves and stuff and then like there's the little mask next to them and then like there's apples and crates next to them which you never see anywhere else in the game it's just that little platform the guy's standing on um <laughs> then you've got the guy like with a backpack on and it's obviously death stranding and like <laughs> there's just all sorts of like references like that throughout the entire game um that's it's just it's just great it was fun it was super fun platforming was like it was it wasn't hard it was just fun it was just a fun game to run through mm-hmm. um what really made that game though was the dual sense 5 controller oh it, my gosh yeah it basically it's basically a tech demo for the controller like let's be real here but it feels yeah. so good the adaptive triggers they get firmer or weaker depending on what you're doing in the game it has like pushback to it that like yeah depending what effect it's going for it's it's the closest i felt to like the analog triggers from the gamecube controller i have felt on a controller since yeah, then it's having just that kind of like varied feedback that you can have is so so nice yeah game. it's really cool like if they just if you have to play it it feels awesome like i can't <laughs> wait to play I, I think i think the greatest example within that game is when you're in like the rocket yeah. ship mode and you're like pushing down both triggers and you're feeling like the vibration and the tension like the pushback as you're like launching yeah, you and can, stuff and then like, like the whole controller like it it pulses across your hands depending on what side of things are you know getting the yeah. feedback in the game um it's just very very well done um if yeah. it's, it's really cool like how it almost like replicates like texture yeah. within the like controller rain. like what surface you're walking on yeah. that rain you can feel the pitter yeah, patter yeah. or if you're like walking on like metal or wood it, like you can feel the difference as you're walking it's yeah. so cool i so really well hope done. that more games take advantage of that um that's kind of something that yeah. we didn't get with the switch hd rumble um, mm-hmm. but I think this, yeah, these, these triggers are awesome. And like, I personally, I am not a big fan of the PlayStation controller and I still like, it's taken me some time to get used to this thing. Like what the, I hate the analog sticks down here. It's just so <laughs> frustrating to me, but, um, you know, I'm getting more and more used to it, but just the triggers alone, it's something that just feels so good and so unique that I'm all for it. Awful. Yeah, <laughs> this is becoming one of my favorite controllers. Like, I love the feel of it so much, and the haptic feedback is awesome. I have noticed, like, my hands kind of get a little cramped if I play for a long time. I don't know if that's I'm just playing too many games right now, or <laughs> if the ergonomics of the controller. But I, I really like it. I think it's I a great personally <laughs> kind of get that as well. I get a little bit of a cramp, and I think it's for yeah. like. I personally feel it's because that analog stick is low on the on the left hand because I have a hard time when I'm playing other games like Spider-Man for instance when I have to hit R1 and R uh, R1 and L1 together or just hit L1 not having my hand like my thumb up it'd be easier to push that but when my thumb's like down and forward I have to like move my finger up it's like weird it like doesn't I, it's like a different motion with my finger, and I don't I don't like the way it feels. Um, I just feel like I'm stretching a little more than I'm used to, so so I definitely so. do understand that feeling, and that's why yeah. golf is so nice because I don't have to use the analog stick. <laughs> so. Um, last thing I'll say about Astrobot, killer soundtrack. Oh so yeah, dude, the lyrics, the lyrics throughout this. <laughs> So the good. lyrics are so funny. Yeah. <laughs> GPU. <laughs> or, or, or there's the other one like SSD. SSD. It's just catchy, stupid, like. But it's like. Singing about like internal 
components it's of the so system. It's so fitting, though, for each... Because each level you play is a portion of the console. So you're playing through, like, the mm -hmm. GPU, the CPU, the SD, the, um, the cooling unit. Like, it's just cool. Yeah. And then the memory. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, lo I love how it's structured, too, how... There's like four levels, one for each like generation. Generation of PlayStation. I was like, that's very well yeah. done. Nice touch. So yeah, that game was awesome. Um, so <laughs> so just overall, before we talk more, um, the uh, the console itself, like interface. What's your thoughts on that? Because I I personally am just gonna say I like the activity modes that they showed off. I thought that's really cool. Um, showing you your progress through the game right on your home menu and showing you <laughs> like you know of each like mission and you can jump right back into it if you want to do it um, without having to like go into the game and go to the level select or anything like that um, everything's instant too like the console's super fast um, that that is my personal favorite part about the system like as someone who uses my PlayStation for like all my media streaming, like to shows and stuff, to go to Disney Plus and Netflix and Crunchyroll, I can load it like that. It's just so fast. I remember on PlayStation 4, like it would take like 15 seconds for the system to turn on, and then like 15 seconds for the media page to load, and then like another 15 seconds to like load the media app, and it's just like. I'd often just go to the kitchen, like get my food and stuff and come back by the time it's like loaded. This, I'm just like, click, click and start. Yeah. I'm just it's, like, ah, it's I awesome. love it. Like, I really hope they don't <laughs> break it with like an update at some point. <laughs> like, yeah, I hope they don't block, like yeah. weigh it down. Like, I mean, obviously it's- But yeah, everything's clean and fast. And the only thing I miss right now is folders, but I'm sure that will eventually get add it back in yeah i think the um, biggest the, the biggest challenge for me like you know i've i haven't played like i played a little bit of ps3 before it broke so this whole interface is you know i know it's all new anyway but like <laughs> finding finding stuff in the menu like finding my friends list is kind of buried that is the one um, thing yeah they they buried the friends list through like a lot of menus that's the one they need to update yeah, that the friends for sure. list being buried like <laughs> i wish there was just like a widget on the screen that had like my friends when i logged in that way i didn't have to go into like game base or go to like my profile and then go to see who's online like yeah. i don't know it's just kind of buried um i feel like that should be like an always on sort of thing it should it should be like one click away from yeah. the home screen rather than having to pull up the quick menu pull up what is it friends party like game base party. and then that has all your party lists there yeah. and, and then after you click the game base you then you have to go to your party you created then you have to enter the voice chat then you yeah, have to there's like, like five menus before you ever get to like talk <laughs> the only way it works well is if you go to like your notifications like if you join a voice chat i'll get a notification and then mm -hmm. i can just join it instantly from the notification so that's that's okay yeah um it, it can be fine yeah, for so, sure. Uh, yeah, hopefully it will. Um, you know, we've we've been using that a lot. We kind of stopped using Discord. Like, this is the first time I've been on my computer, and I couldn't tell you when, <laughs> <laughs> just because I've been doing nothing really but playing Pit Cross on Switch and playing uh, games on PS5. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely yeah. works. It's definitely functional, and since my PlayStation's in another complete room, uh, it has worked well for keeping conversations going and playing on the playstation yeah. so. and i'm not used to that at all like using like a controller to talk through and stuff but it's really cool like you can either talk directly through the mic and the speaker right on the controller or you know mm -hmm. and it, that works surprisingly well by itself if you don't have a headset like the controller is fully equipped with like mic and uh audio capabilities yeah. so. so it's i've done it a couple times that way and it works good um it's the other feature that we've used a lot is the screen sharing, which is basically what mm -hmm. we were doing in Discord all the time, which is just like sharing our screen of like, we'll be playing completely different games, but we'll just share our screens and just play um, and, you know, chat. Um, the picture in picture is pretty cool. Um, sometimes it can get in the way of like another game if you're playing, like if you have like a radar on the screen 
and you cover up the radar with the picture picture, you might have to like move it around real quick. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or you can do the snap <laughs> to the side, which will then just resize mm -hmm. your screen to um, to fit it however you'd like. But yeah. it works surprisingly well. I mean, we ran into a little issue with it last night, I think, but that was the first time that we've really had issues with it. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm totally happy with with my purchase of the console at the moment um and then like the only thing i've been playing though is ps4 games <laughs> because i've got so much <laughs> to play that's fine um, you you've missed a whole generation and they gave you a buttload of ps4 games yeah, to play so, so. Um, without being too long-winded here um i just finished spider-man remastered which i got i bought the miles morales ultimate launch edition um, which came with the Spider-Man remastered because um, I knew I had to play that first because, you know, I love Spider-Man and I just never played the game and that's like the one game besides Horizon. Those are like the two games on my list that I wanted to play on PS4 that I never did. So I immediately jumped into Spider-Man and I was a little disappointed at first. I was like starting to feel bad about it. I was like, oh man, I'm just not into these type of games. This sucks. And like, I was getting, I got wrecked in the first fight. Um, and I just kept <laughs> losing. And I think it's just cause I was just like button mashing the whole time. And I wasn't really uh, strategizing my, my movements and attacks and dodges and stuff. So um, they also kind of limit you in the beginning of the game, like very, limited move set so i think it was yeah, supposed true. to you're supposed to feel a little because you weak. only have like three or five web yeah. shots too then and then like by the end i mm -hmm. had 10 and i had all these other gadgets everywhere and um yeah yeah so as the more and more i played it the more and more i was just amazed with it like like <laughs> flying through the city was awesome like i i immediately flew and tried to find uh nintendo world <laughs> the Nintendo World <laughs> Store. So I went to Rockefeller Center and went on the corner and I was like, this is a jewelry shop. This is not Nintendo. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and then I, of course, looked for like the World Trade Center, World Trade One, and, you know, saw that it, it's there, but it's not there. And there's like legal stuff that came in with that. But but regardless, like there, there are actual buildings that are, you know, in New York City there. Like you got Madison Square Garden, Empire State Building, and you know all the like historical sites that you would see. Um, but it's just really cool. Like it's it's New York City. It's just so cool flying through that. Um, and like so yeah, seamlessly. Like I have no idea. There's how they literally that like off. no loading, <laughs> nothing. And it's it's the breath of the wild in the city. That's really what it is. Like <laughs> if you want to climb it, you can climb it until you get to like the water. Anything that's within the island of Manhattan, like you're good. But if you if you try to go out in the water and try to go out to like Statue of Liberty or any of that stuff, like the bridges are blocked and stuff like that, that's understandable, but like just just the openness of it was was awesome i really enjoyed it um just, i, I like that you could have like the radar and waypoints to find stuff so you just didn't feel like you're lost all the time you always kind of had an objective of like where to go or if you didn't want to just do the main story you could focus on doing the crime missions or doing the side missions or getting the backpacks that you have to find around the city or other bonus challenges and stuff like that and they're not like difficult to find um, once you have your radar on. Um, but the story, though, I I did put it off for a while because I was collecting stuff. Uh, <laughs> but once I got back into the story, I was completely hooked because Sinister Sinister Six enemies all come out. Like it, I don't want to. You know, I'm sure everyone's already played it. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's so much fun <laughs> playing it. I love a good Spider-Man story. I was totally into it. I could have just watched it as a movie and I would have been just as happy. <laughs> like, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And it got to the point where I had um, the last two boss battles. Well, I guess the last three boss battles because there was two and then one each to finish the game for the last four um, guys. And once I beat the two together i was like all right well i'm just gonna go beat the game now <laughs> so next thing you know it's like two o'clock in the morning and i'm like watching the credits and i'm like waiting for like extra scenes and i don't want to push any button and 
<laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just great. I, I can't, I can keep talking about it, but I don't want to. <laughs> it was, it was really uh, good. That was good. It was, it's definitely a great game. It's just, like, so authentic to, like... It's Spider-Man. The Spider-Man Absolutely, yeah. like, the, just the wit <laughs> and, like, you know, just being a child. <laughs> like, it's just great. I love the smack talk he does. It's just really, really good. And I, I need to play Miles Morales now because uh, I think I'll have just as much fun with it, but I need to... Um, just switch I'm, yeah, I think I'm just going to take a little bit of a break just to kind of, you know, that way when I jump back into the city, it feels, it feels new. It. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what I've been playing by myself. You want to talk about um, anything you've got? What else? What else? We, we got a few more games that we've been playing on PS5. Um, one that you convinced me to buy that we've been playing together so <laughs> is uh, Everybody's Golf, the game. I'm sure you've heard Chad mention many, many, many times here. Usually us Hot Shots Golf. But I love yes. it. I love those <laughs> games so much. Um, and this this is this is another one with, with like, you know, as epic as like Spider-Man and Horizon are supposed to be. Like everybody's golf was like right there because the last <laughs> one I played was the one on the PS3. So um, I like out of bounds, I think is what it was called. And it was great. I loved that game. It had 3D mode on TV and stuff. It was like really cool. But everybody's golf was the next the next chapter in that series. So I I immediately bought that like the day the day <laughs> after I got my. This is this is my first time playing it. So. I bought it the day after I got my PS5 and. I've just been, you know, we've we've played some online matches together with friends. Um, trying to focus a little bit on single player now, now that I've finished Spider-Man, because Spider-Man was really my my main focus at the time. Yeah. But it's it's awesome. <laughs> Play it. It's the best <laughs> golf game. I love it's fun. it. <laughs> it's fun. It's a golf game. It's a golf game, but there's uh -huh. so much customization to it, and it's all cartoony and just like. Like the the levels itself. The courses look really that's nice. That's the thing. I was surprised how how detailed the the court greens actually look. The courses in the worlds are super like detailed, but your character yeah. can be like the most like it almost looks like like a me or something. Like not not as bad as a me, yeah. but like <laughs> you know it's it's very like 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 uh, what what were those like Xbox avatars? Yeah, that's or exactly what it is. It's like an Xbox <laughs> avatar. That's exactly what it looks like. And, um, you know, so they kind of like, your characters kind of feel out of place, but that's the way Hot Shots have always been. It's always been these very cartoony looking characters. Um, and you've got your customizations for, you know, everything on that character, even rotating your hat around, which Patrick found out. So we had to go mess with that a little bit. <laughs> and, um, you know, carts are in this, you can ride carts in this game now. There's, you can ride a chocobo if you pay them five bucks. <laughs> Which I'm tempted to do just so I have it. Um, but it's it's just so much fun. I, I love that game. It's just a chill game. Um, you know, you just sit down, play a couple rounds, relax, unless you get really irritated by the game. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not. It I'm super fun. happy. It was it was twelve bucks on sale uh, digitally, which I picked it up. I went and bought it physically for thirteen bucks at a local game shop. So um, I just wanted to have it on my shelf because I love that game series so much. So that's one thing I should mention about the PS5 that I was surprised. That disc drive is loud. Yeah, it's, it's pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> it made it quiet down eventually, but like the first time it boots up, it's like. Whoosh. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, oh and, and one thing I did with Spider-Man the, the day I got it, I put the disc in upside down because oh. my PS5 is vertical. You it's vertical, it vertically. so I wasn't paying attention to orientation. I was like, oh, well, all the, you know, the fat part of the components are that way. So I turned it, put it in, and it was like, I could hear it <laughs> like spinning. And I was like, that's not booting. I bet I put it in backwards. And then it it actually popped up and told me like make sure you put the disc in the right way and i turned it over and felt dumb <laughs> so and then i looked at the console and was like well obviously if it was playing flat that's the way it would go flat, so yeah which is how i have it so i don't know yeah, that so issue. that's just one thing that um you know 
if you do have a vertical. How did, how did we not mention, like, our first impression, like, how big this console is? <laughs> you know, it's it's <laughs> big, but I thought it was bigger. I, I don't know. Like, it is a big console, but, like, it, it's really not much bigger than my Xbox One. Like, my original Xbox One. I guess compared to those systems, like it's, yeah. Because I tried, like, it doesn't fit in the cubby where my Xbox One is, but it's literally just, like, a centimeter or two, like, wider. <laughs> um, I guess maybe I, when I opened it and it's, like, sitting next to, like, all my Nintendo consoles in history, like, is like, four Wii systems put together. It's just, like, it's a massive... I mean, I've got mine sitting right next to my Switch dock, and it's, like towering over it like compared to those <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Sure. it's like it's ginormous and it actually is in front of my second monitor here and you can't even see i'm just gonna turn this camera if you see it it's blocking the monitor right there so i mean it definitely is is big but but i thought it was, i thought it was gonna be bigger i thought it was gonna be closer to like a pc yeah. tower um but i don't know mine just been it's literally hasn't moved this desk since um since I got it, so I, I need to find its its permanent home. I might even just put a shelf on the wall to like put it up there or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I made room for it. I, I I like how it looks in my living room now. Um, but yeah, I definitely had to do it horizontal because standing up vertical to me it, it was giving me vertigo. It looked like it was like tipping, so I didn't like. <laughs> Maybe it's just the angle down view I was viewing it at, but because of the curves, it just like always looked like it was leaning. I was like, I don't like this. You're going, you're it's going. It's kind of weird because like <laughs> I don't know if yours has it, but like if you look at the sides where it curves in, right in the middle, mm -hmm. it looks like it's. It almost looks like the mold was messed up. It's kind of like if you've ever three D printed something, you kind of see like the print lines. It kind of looks like that, but it's like a circular swirl like right in the middle of the console on the sides. So I don't know if I just have like a defective side panel, but it just looks kind of <laughs> weird in certain lights. Um, that was my Maybe. first take on it, but sure. I, I don't care how the console looks really. I just want to play games. Yeah. So. I bet you they'll have a customizable like side Probably frame they had a company. Since they, they said they did just Yeah, there was off. a company that was going to sell them, apparently, like right before it came yeah, out. Yeah. And then Sony was like, no. Yeah, they got a cease and desist, so. Probably because they want to do it. It's very likely. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Xbox Xbox 360 had all the customizable faceplates and stuff, and I don't know. We'll see. But I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. any anything else? Um, you know, I have, I have like 27 games that I got for free from becoming a <laughs> PS Plus member and then just getting all the PS4 games they gave to PS5 owners. Um, yeah, there are tons of games to be played. Um, I guess I can mention a few single player games I was playing on it. Um, I played, I started with kind of one of the, like something old school PlayStation feel after playing Astro Bot. I was like, all right, let's go through PlayStation's lineage. Let's see. What are these free games I got? Let's start with Crash Bandicoot. You know, it was the insane trilogy remastered, but still, I was like, all right, that feels old school. And I was like, all right, it's not bad. And then you get further into games like, okay, and I remember why I hate this game. It's just frustrating. You got to so, the level oh, okay. where you're riding on the pig, and then you're like, nope, I'm done. That's that's pretty much where I got in the. Ins <laughs> that's that's where I got to the insane trilogy on Switch. I bought it for Switch. And I got about that far, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to play this anymore. And now I remember why I stopped playing this. <laughs> yeah, it's so frustrating. Like, I actually got to, like, I think the Lost World, past, like, the factory levels, and you're in, like, these dark temple ruins and stuff. But just, it's so frustrating, especially the bridge levels. Those were worse. Oh I don't my gosh. mind the, like, 2D platforming sections of the game. Like, even, like, the 2D, 3D, like, jumping forward... I think it's cool, like, having some depth to your 2D platforming. Like, that's a fun concept, but the way they implement it is just usually, like, mean. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't like the, the camera, like, the levels where the ball's chasing you and stuff and, like, when yeah. you're riding at Yeah, yeah, running forward towards the screen, while it's, like, fun, it's just also, like, 
bad yeah. design because like you can never see what you're doing so you pretty much have to like just die and learn where to go like you yeah know, so it's it's definitely difficult i remember playing like a lot of crash as a kid and um you know getting far but i just didn't do it when i played it near but i might go back to it but yeah. i have it now it's free which is awesome so <laughs> yep so you can play all three of those games yeah um and then, so I was like, okay, I'm done with Crash, so what's next in PlayStation kind of lineage? I was like, all right, let's go do Ratchet and Clank. All right, we'll play that next. Um, this was the, I guess, reboot, remake, or whatever of the Ratchet and Clank. So um, whatever their newest one was, that's not not the new one coming the new out. One coming but, out looks cool. Yeah. And I've never, I've never played a cool. Ratchet and Clank game, ever. <laughs> but at the same time, playing it, I'm like, I'm kind of like I don't understand the popularity of it as much like it's super cheesy and corny like all the like more corny than Spider-Man Spider-Man is like good corny Spider-God <laughs> Spider <-God. laughs> I don't know the jokes kind of are very hit or miss with the Ratchet and Clank and there's just so much chaos going on on the screen but I, I, I kept playing I was kind of having fun but i got all the way to the last boss in that game and it was just like also oh, frustrating as heck so then i just put that down <laughs> i was like i've played enough i have 15 more games to play next <laughs> yeah i've got so many games to play <laughs> yeah um and then the last most recently i picked up ghost of tsushima because it was on sale for black friday I think for like $35, I was like, all right, that, that's a price that I'll, I'll jump on. I, I wanted to play that game. And so I'm not super far into that game yet. I'm only like maybe three or so hours in. Um, but I am enjoying a lot of aspects of it. Some of the combat is hit or miss. Um, like sometimes it like feels really good and it's like, oh, you're connecting all these combos and counters and stuff and other times you're just like get surrounded by five people and you're dead <laughs> yeah that's, i didn't watch that happen to you last night <laughs> yes <laughs> but the world itself is really cool i love how they implement like tracking missions and stuff how it's all kind of done with like the wind and it's very immersive and seamless as you're like riding through the world uh, sometimes like a lot of nature is kind of clues as to like finding treasures or secrets Treasure. in the world you'll like follow a fox or a bird around and it'll lead you to someplace secret and you're like oh that's cool i was just chasing the fox because i wanted to chase the fox and it actually led me someplace cool <laughs> um and yeah yeah like the game itself like how it structures missions is just so kind of cool and cinematic like it pops up this like vertical title screen like in this episode and you're like all right we're going on this mission here and it's like its own little like mini film it's just it's very neat i like a lot of the ideas that they are presenting like presentation wide super cool yeah. um so I'm, I'm looking forward to playing more but that that's just my quick first impressions of it cool so yeah that's that's our ps5 rundown i guess yeah we <laughs> talked a lot of playstation here so uh, as expected <laughs> you know um I'm, I'm very happy with with the console at the moment so I, I don't see anything negative coming out of it especially with the entire back catalog of the ps4 except for joe's diner poor joe <laughs> poor joe <laughs> so, all right well with that let's take a quick break and then we will take a quick break and we'll cover a few more news stories cool. yeah <laughs> There'll be more than just PlayStation. <laughs> All right.
All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Let's get into some news topics that aren't PlayStation. And <laughs> one of the big news kind of scandals that broke out recently is a whole lot of stuff leaked from Capcom from a... I think, I think someone like hacked into their system or something. I actually didn't read anything about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's not the best kind of leak in the sense that a lot of like personal information was also kind uh, of like one of those stolen too. Yeah, so I definitely feel bad about that. But since all these games are kind of out in the open, it's kind of you know might as well talk about it <laughs> um and honestly a lot of it's not that surprising like you are expecting Capcom to make sequels to Resident Evil and Street Fighter and all their big franchises like that is going to happen Street Fighter um, 7 what so <laughs> what <laughs> uh so mainly I'll just try to point out the things that are somewhat notable um so we have a number of remakes coming out. Uh, you probably could have guessed that there's going to be a Resident Evil 4 remake based off the trend of the them going back to those series. Uh, but there's also going to be a remake of Final Fight and so Power Stone. Cool, those are such good games. <laughs> Final Fight is awesome. Like, that's such a good game. <laughs> if you like... Yeah, I never actually played oh, either really? of those. Oh, my so. God, dude. Yeah. Final Fight is... That escaped my... The best version of Final Fight is on Sega CD. Like, if you play the Super Nintendo version, it's awful. It's not even two-player. It's, like, it's <laughs> so bad. Um, but, no, Final Fight is it's a great beat-em-up. If you like Streets of Rage or um, any of those Capcom beat-em-up games, Knights of the Round, um, I'm, it's not even Capcom, but, like, Ninja Turtles, throw it in there as well. It's very similar. Mm. Like, <laughs> you know, that's Konami, but it's still, if you like any of those beat-em-up games like that... Um, so good <laughs> so cool good. definitely have to definitely have to play those <laughs> so if they're remaking that it's great and you've never played power stone oh no, man uh, i never owned like any Sega yeah, that's systems, true, so <laughs> power stone's awesome that's that's a fun game there's like it's like fighting but there's like environment like you're in an environment area it's like i've heard it's almost kind of like not Smash Brothers, but like a kind top of, down. It's, it's, or... it's like it's, it's like very isometric. I think different. It's like isometric where like you can yeah. jump up yeah. on to like. <sighs> Dude, I haven't played it forever, but I loved it on the Dreamcast. I had it on the Dreamcast, <laughs> and um, I remember you could like jump up onto like other platforms out of the way in the you know in the sense of like you know Smash Brothers. Um, and there's items you pick mm -hmm. up and stuff like that, power ups. Uh, it's just it's really fun really fun fighting yeah. game that one sounds pretty yeah. interesting I'm, I'm always up for games that kind of take genres in new directions yeah, power stone so. is really cool i would be very interested in a power stone collection or remake that'd be fun mm -hmm. plus that game like died on the dreamcast like i don't think it i don't think it ever yeah. was anywhere else not that i am yeah, aware maybe, of maybe maybe yeah. it came out somewhere else but i don't, I don't recall it Sorry, mini popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, keep churning that popcorn. We'll keep going through this leak here. There's lots more to be entertained. Uh, so apparently they're working on a, what sounds like a Battle Royale game for Resident That's Evil. Weird. Sounds sounds intriguing. I don't it's like know. like a zombie battle. Like, they could do like a, like a zombie Left 4 battle. Dead. That'd be cool. I think it'd be fun if, like, if you have a lot of people and if you lose, you're not, like, out of the game right away. What if you became the zombies and okay. something? That I think that that'd could be, be cool. really cool. Yeah, because then you, like, last yeah, one And then there'd just be, like, hordes of zombies from everyone who lost, just, like, trying to finish off the remaining players. Be... That would actually be really cool, because it would kind of be, like, and, like, they could do it like that, the way, like, Modern Warfare does, like, the Gulag to come back, like, when you die. So it'd be like one yeah. of those things, like if you get a zombie kill, you're back in the game. But but <laughs> obviously you're a zombie, so if a player kills you, then you're out. Like that'd be that'd be kind of mm -hmm. cool, interesting mechanic. Or if you're in a zombie and you get killed, you just keep respawning as a zombie until. 
Yeah. Um. So I don't, I don't know if that's how yeah, it works. Yeah, that's, just that's where my mind goes to. But <laughs> it'd be cool though. There is an evil battle royale. We'll keep an eye on. We'll see what that ends up being. Uh. Another kind of notable headline I thought was uh, Monster Hunter Rise and Stories 2, which they recently announced for Switch. It seems like uh, that won't be exclusive for Switch forever. Um, as they'll be coming to other, I think the PC and maybe other systems after. So, but it will be coming to Switch first. Um, but obviously they did not this was not intended information to get out. So I guess you could pretend it's Switch exclusive for now, but it's, it's going to come to other systems. <laughs> yeah, they, I remember that's the game that they showed in the last uh, Partner Direct. Yeah, they, yeah, that last Partner Direct, I think was so October. I'm pretty sure that's the one I thought looked... That's like around the time we did our last episode. And um, yeah. yeah, I think that was the game I was like, it looks kind of PS2-ish. <laughs> like the graphics, but yeah, whatever. It's... <laughs> Like I said, graphics don't make games, but it definitely looked a little, <laughs> a little dated. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to talk from the Capcom League is what I'm probably most excited about in Chad will be too. There's going to be a lot more Ace Attorney. Whoa, yeah. Ace Attorney's Ooh, so boy. good. So good. So good. We so still have, we still have the third off, one to play. Yeah, dude, if you want to play that again, I'll watch. I'm ready. This is great. I, <laughs> for more I love the way we're playing that, though. I think that's like, like, I like playing the game, but it's more fun playing with friends. Like, just to talk yeah. it out and try to, like, you know, just read the story. and It's true. It's just it's fun. True. Not that it's hard. Like, I'm sure I could figure it all out myself, but it's just fun to, like, play that together. And it's, like, it's super chill, too. Hmm. But um, yeah. As in regards to Ace Attorney news, there's there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, first off, there were two Ace Attorney games that were never released outside of J Japan, um, or it might have been Japan and Europe. I'm not sure. Uh, regardless, it is now being localized, and we will be able to play these games. They're called a Great Ace Attorney uh, games, as what it's being dubbed. They are basically uh you kind of working with like sherlock holmes in this kind of like steampunk europe um country are you googling that i was or... just looking it up real quick <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah yeah i'm listening it has a really much longer weird name i forget what it's called in japan i should, I should look that up too real quick <laughs> This will be edited out of the podcast. <laughs> you think so? Okay, what well, is it called? Dai Gaiakuten Saiban? Better job yeah. than I would have done. <laughs> <laughs> but there's two of those games, and I've always wanted to play them. They look really fun, and I can't wait for those to be localized. So that's exciting. That's like two new games. Not to mention an Ace Attorney of 7 is in development, according to this leak. And the Ace Attorneys 4 through 6, they are considering a collection for those. So another collection of those games would be great because they're only playable, I think, on the 3DS. That so awesome. get those onto more systems would be yeah. great, especially in a collection yeah, I'd form. I'd love to be able to grab those considering I wouldn't be able to stream it any other way to you guys. <laughs> so True. Yeah. yeah. So that would open a whole world of possibilities. Yeah, I, I think um, I'll definitely grab that if it comes out. Yeah, those those are great games. I loved every single one of them, uh, four, five, and six. Um, I think number four is actually Apollo Justice, but it's still part of that um, universe. It's just a different character. But I really like that one actually a lot so because, uh, <laughs> yeah, the games are great. Um, that one in particular. Even though you're playing as a different character, uh, Phoenix is still in it, and just his attitude in it is like so nonchalant, just so like out of character for him. But it works so well. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely gonna have to play some of those again because it's it's been a while, and I think maybe that's the palate cleanse I need before before Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Talking about Phoenix Rise, Rise and the desire yeah. to play it again. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, great game. All right. But I, I think that covers it pretty much for the Capcom leak. So, cool. so yeah. next on the list, 
there's there's been some some scandalous stuff <laughs> going on in the uh, Super Smash Brothers community, which yeah. Uh, I'm I'm more surprised at like how heated it is, in the sense that it seems you're of like one of two opinions. I don't understand. My thing. So this. So what like, went down was, and I'm sure everybody knows this already, is Nintendo shut down a tournament because the tournament was going to be using the Dolphin emulator, using a plugin called Slippy. Uh, Slippy. Which allows it yeah. to basically inject online netcode for a game that never had online netcode. So, <laughs> the th here's my take on this. So Nintendo shut it down, and people are okay. People are the the thing got just just to give Nintendo a little credit here. They first asked them, "Don't use." Yeah, that. they asked them to stop, and they said, "No, we're gonna do it." And anyway. like, we'll be fine. <laughs> And they're like, no, we're doing it anyway. All right, we're shutting it yeah. down. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Like, I get it because, like, it's it's cool that somebody is able to do that to make you know mm -hmm. online net play you know with emulators. That's existed for a long time, but it's just it's just neat. I think the technology behind it's neat. The community came together to figure out how to do it. Um, that's that's really cool. Um. The issue is obviously, you know, they're modifying the game. Nintendo owns the game. And mm -hmm. even though you can take a, you know, image of your game that you've purchased, it's very likely that that game is pirated. So that is why <laughs> Nintendo is not going to allow this sort of thing. With that said, I think they probably could have got away with it if there was a way, which I'm sure... You know, I don't know if it exists or not. If there was a way for them to do it on a like hardware level instead of using a PC emulator, they could have maybe gotten away with it. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that would have you know mattered. Um, I bring that up just because I know that like there was projects <laughs> for like Dreamcast and projects for the original Xbox where you could basically create an online server on a computer. And using your network adapter, you can connect to that that server to host the game or to you know do whatever. It was basically like an like an unofficial online server that bypassed like Xbox Live or was able to bring things together for the Dreamcast. Um, I know that that was being done before. Again, I don't think that's anything that is currently available on GameCube. Maybe it is, but. Um, I feel like there would have been less scrutiny if that was the case, because then you would have to very likely have a GameCube and the disc. Not to say you couldn't mod the GameCube, but <laughs> there's just there's a lot of things that could have came in. Regardless, I'm not surprised Nintendo stopped it and shut it down. And yeah. the thing for me, and and I'm gonna you know, luckily nobody listens to us, so we're not gonna hear shit about it. <laughs> 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 but why not everybody knows 2020 sucks covid's here you can't see people in person melee doesn't have online the the minute nintendo decided to step in and shut it down you should have just said to the community hey guys we have to run ultimate this year we have to if you want to have a smash tournament we we just have to play a different play game ultimate. yeah we can't do, we can't melee. do melee play <laughs> ultimate it's one tournament. Like, I get it. Melee has its fan base. Mm -hmm. I love Melee. I think it's a great game. It's one of my favorite I'm, GameCube games. I'm going to play Devil's Advocate here, but that's my livelihood. Yeah. That's the only game I'm good at. I can't play Ultimate. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I don't feel like... <laughs> I don't feel like... If you're if you're that good at Melee, I don't feel like you're going to be terrible at Ultimate. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm by no means a great smash player but like i feel like i'm just as good in ultimate as i am in melee <laughs> like, i don't know it's just for one tournament i think the community could sacrifice that in the name of you know 2020 sucking so i just i don't i just don't get that that's that's the point that this could have all been avoided if it was <laughs> it totally if it was just a community effort i i don't understand why people are 
getting mad at Nintendo. Like, I get it, like, they want Melee, but, like, I don't understand why they don't understand why Nintendo had to do what they had to yeah. do. Like, they can't have... They can't set the precedent of that this is okay for people to take their games and... <laughs> If they allow this once, then it allows it for, like, any of their games. Yeah. And like I said, and I think it's cool. I think it's awesome. And the only reason it... I, I have no qualms with it existing, that, for sure. It's just they can't, like, endorse it publicly for, like, a financial tournament. Yeah, like... <laughs> that's the thing. Like, it's it's really cool. And if, you know, if it wasn't, like, this massive... It's, like, the biggest Melee tournament of the year. Like, yeah. <laughs> if, if it wasn't that, it probably never would have even been an issue. But, but again, I think it's one of those things that it could have been avoided. Um, and it wasn't. And here, this is where we are. And people are pissed off, which, again, I understand on both sides. I understand fans being upset. But at the same time, you know, play Ultimate one year. Because you, I, I mm. almost guarantee you... If you're that hardcore into the melee scene, you probably have a copy of Smash Ultimate as well and a Switch. <laughs> like I find it very hard to believe that nobody has a Switch or an online, you know, or Ultimate that is playing in that tournament. But I don't know. That's yeah. just my thing. And they probably still complain about the online. Sure, I mean the online is what it is, unfortunately, <laughs> and I get that. Like this is supposed to be decent, but it's just one of those things that. 2020 sucks and we all have to sacrifice yep. for it so. <laughs> you're not gonna be able to do everything you wanted yeah. to this year so deal yeah. with it so and with that said i guess it was like this week or tonight or something there was like a splatoon tournament and somebody tried to make their team name free melee and and that turned into a whole so. thing and nintendo shut down the stream and so now people are mad again about this. <laughs> it's just like, again, it could have all been avoided if it was just like, hey guys, let's play Ultimate instead. And maybe they did. I don't know. I'm not paying attention. But from all the uh, anger you read about it, I'm sure it's just it's just done. <laughs> but that's, that's really all I have to say. Anything else you want to add? <laughs> nah, really. I find the whole thing just yeah, silly. It is. It's just crazy. <laughs> And people's like overreactions just like kind of befuddling. I it's very clear to me, but yeah. <laughs> if you feel so passionate, yeah, it's just it's just weird. Like again, I get it. I get it on both sides. I think it's I think it's 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 just a game though, man. Like like I get it. I mean, I'm sure people start your own underground smash brothers <laughs> melee tournament with slippy yeah, i don't know just don't make, make it public <laughs> underground scene yeah yeah i don't know i don't know what else you do there so that's it so with that being uh, said what the heck is going on on march 31st <laughs> something's going down man you've heard me say it time and time again on this podcast something is going down and we just have even more evidence now <laughs> something's going down <laughs> so as of now to the, on top of what was it before mars 35th Smart anniversary Marty? fire, fire emblem. emblem um there was something there else, was something but, else. Oh, is it is tetris 99 going away too or no or is that just mario Oh no, the Mario, the Mario, the 35. Mario Thirty Five uh, game. Oh yeah, yeah, battle the game. Battle Royale game, and um, along with the Mario Anniversary yeah. Collection or All Stars Three D. Yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah, I already forgot what that yeah, game was so, called. So you've um, got those. You've got <laughs> so those, those three, three are all gone. <laughs> ending uh, on the thirty first. You can't get them if you haven't got them before. Then now, Mario Maker for the Wii U. <laughs> Players will no longer be able to upload levels after March 31st. Which is fine, because I, I guarantee you, like, nobody's really playing that. I'm sure there's there's probably a handful of people that still have a Wii U. But really, Mario Maker 2... I wonder, I wonder if that includes the 3DS version. I don't think it does. It's just the Wii U version, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's it's weird, because, like... Like, Mario Maker 2 is the better Mario Maker game. The only thing, the, the Wii yeah. U version, it has all the amiibo costumes, which is awesome. 
Vivo costume. Vivo costumes yeah. are cool. And it has the little fly swatter mini game, which I love because that's a complete <laughs> throwback to Mario Paint. <laughs> but um, but yeah, other than that, like I don't, I don't know. Um, it's weird that it's March thirty first, so that makes me think. That that's the thing. Like such a specific date of which there are already so many other things happening on so that day. that's that's the end of nintendo's fiscal year their fiscal True. year ends on march 31st but it's just weird that they're why like why, why kill why? off all this stuff like why publicly announce it like i just think it's yeah. kind of weird and why why has there been no like other cutoff dates why is like why are they cutting off so many things at the end of this specific fiscal year like this has never happened before yeah it's it's really <laughs> interesting um you know, Patrick has his speculation of a Switch Pro. Still a good possibility. I'm, I'm for, you know, if it comes out, I'll get it. That's fine. <laughs> um, um, I think there's been some new suggestions or thoughts of maybe something to do with their online system, especially with this. That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm just wondering if, like, they're going to change the way that the online system works, and therefore, that's why... Maybe, maybe Nintendo is going to go, like, full-on Netflix. No, and just... that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just wondering if that's why the Wii U levels aren't going to be uploadable anymore. Like, it just seems weird. Like, I don't know. Um, maybe they're just changing the way that works. The way that the, the Wii U online works. But it's not every Wii U game, either, though. It's just that one. So it's, yeah. it's definitely kind of strange. But maybe they're they're gonna Missed. repurpose that server for the Zelda Maker that's coming out next year for the Zelda anniversary, <laughs> the Zelda 35 anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a Zelda Maker. I'd be down for making some yeah, dungeons. As long as they're not like the ones in Link uh, Link's Awakening. <laughs> yeah, no, we we definitely need more control than what Link's Awakening. Just getting your rooms to throw together. That was their but, test. That was their blech. test to see. You. If you're gonna. Make let me make my own dungeons. I want to make my own block puzzles. Let me do yeah, it. Yeah, that'd be. <laughs> I can see that being fun. Sliding puzzles, right? On ice. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do it. Do it, Nintendo. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. March thirty first. We'll be here before we know it. <laughs> so. Yep. Yep. We'll have. Uh, we won't beat this topic to death, as we've mentioned it many times. But we will. I just wanted to point out this. I guess the. The Strangest biggest release we'll building. have right before that will be um, Mario 3D World Remastered with the Bowser's yeah, Fury. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and that's in that's, February. Yeah, it's like, so. so that'll probably be the last game they release that fiscal year, I would imagine. Unless we get like a maybe, like a. Honestly, I don't know what Nintendo is doing besides that 3D that's World. It right like, now, that's all we know. Hey, we need that. We need a direct soon. Maybe this week. <laughs> with some Maybe. announcements at the video game awards <laughs> i'll take a few announcements at the video game awards let's, let's segue into yeah. that <laughs> figure that set up well <laughs> yes but uh this coming thursday what is it uh december 10th is the video game awards um a few weeks ago they announced their nominations for the game of the years we can start with that uh, in which this year the games of the year are Doom Eternal Final Fantasy 7 Remake Ghost of Tsushima Hades I think that's the only indie game up there Animal Crossing New Horizons and Last of Us Part 2 I have not played a single Animal Crossing game on that list. Definitely has a big contrast <laughs> compared to some of those games. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played a single game on that list. <laughs> so. Well, sir. <laughs> so you have no say in who will win no. this year. <laughs> I don't think Animal Crossing will. Maybe, but I doubt it. If you were just to be a betting man, what what do you think? <laughs> I would say either Last of Us or Final Fantasy VII. Just because of the right. wait for Final Fantasy VII and then the hype behind Last of Us, that would be one of those two. Would be my guess. 
like I don't Hades is just there because everyone's talking about it. That's what I think. And then Animal Crossing's there because of COVID. <laughs> that's that's my take on it. All if right, an, if Animal Crossing fair. came out in a normal year, I don't think it would be on there. Quite possible. Quite possible. Um, I do want to give Animal Crossing some credit because I do think it has a shot. Yeah. I, I'm I'm leaning towards Animal Crossing or less thought less of us just because artsy critics will want to. It's the most beautiful game ever, even though it has so much controversy behind it. But um, <laughs> to give Animal Crossing a little credit, um, what I think a lot of people are calling like the cultural effect, I think design wise, it's a credit to its accessibility, which I think is a unique factor compared to every game on this list. This is a game that's like very accessible to all players. Yeah. And yet, casual and more hardcore, what, what have you, everyone can find a different level of depth to enjoy about this game. So, like, you can dig really deep into Animal Crossing if you want, in the level of like customization and like fish hunting, bug hunting, or you can just be like, I just like gathering coconuts and talking to my neighbor animals. Like, <laughs> whatever you want to enjoy out of this game there's different levels of enjoyment that could be had. So I think that's a unique factor yeah. in its Yeah, favorite. I mean, I, I, that that makes sense and it's valid. I just don't think that that's how it's going to go down. <laughs> just yeah. because, like, no, most I, of these... I'm leaning towards The Last of Us. We'll probably win just because that's how I can predict these award shows usually yeah, going. That's the thing, but... I mean game of the years but i think animal crossing has a small chance so you're saying uh, there's a chance <laughs> there's a chance yeah honestly i would love if animal crossing one just to see everyone's reactions yeah, <laughs> yeah it would be pretty crazy because you'd have you'd have a lot of people being excited and then you'd have a lot of people really angry <laughs> <laughs> really angry. This cartoony game with graphics from a Wii beat out the last of us. <laughs> like... Here's the, what would be even amazing. Like, if it won, and then for the acceptance speech, you had like a little Isabel go on the screen and like at her desk. From the, thank you so much. From Nintendo. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> that would warm my heart so much. <laughs> and it's all digital too. You never know. I'm sure they have those speeches ready. Yeah. They could. <laughs> Uh, that's funny but yeah let's get back on the topic of like what new games because video game awards are very notorious for giving new game announcements world um, premiere so world <laughs> premiere exclusive yeah. <laughs> so well the um like nintendo wise in the past they've shown breath of the wild what like that first look at it they showed the dlc with the motorcycle yeah. Uh, they showed Bayonetta 3, which we have not heard of since, in, since, <laughs> since forever. That, really? Like, like <laughs> as far much. as seeing anything related, and that was just a title screen. <laughs> um, and they also had that pretty cool reveal of Joker in Smash Brothers, which no one saw coming. So what do you think we will see at the Game Awards this year? Uh, Cyberpunk, because it comes out that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll be definitely. So they'll be talking about for that. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, I, well, I think well, it makes it definitely makes sense to do a Smash reveal because we haven't had one since. Um, oh man, who was the last person in Smash? I don't even remember. Minecraft. Minecraft. Yeah, we haven't had anything since Minecraft, so I feel <laughs> like um, I feel like. We... It's just about time for another character announcement, so it does line up in yeah, that I sense. Think that, that could work. Um, mm. Or was that? Nah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So yes, that there. Um, I I don't expect a console from Nintendo, like a console announcement. That's not going to happen. Oh. If, Oh my gosh! I didn't even consider that. Yeah, that'd be that'd be. <laughs> it would be insane. awesome, but no, that's not happening during the Game Awards. That's that's too no. big. I, I don't that's think so either. Big. Especially since Nintendo said nothing yeah, this yeah. year, so I I don't expect them to say anything. Um, honestly, I mean, 
I could see maybe a Bayonetta 3. I, I feel like Bayonetta yeah, 3 update. would maybe make sense. Um, I wouldn't expect Metroid anything like that. Like, we're talking huh? about, like, Nintendo. Nope. Not even with the, the crazy Fortnite rumors. I mean, if if that <laughs> comes out, then maybe that's what you're going to see, but you're not going to get, like... I don't think we're going to see anything for Prime 4. Like, like a cutscene or anything. I don't know. Oh, that would be so good, though. I want to see something. Yeah, I would love to as well. Just, you know, like I said, I've... I want, I want Prime 4 cinematic trailer, and then tr Trilogy drops today... And also, Samus is in Fortnite, and just like, here's all the yeah. Metroid. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. I mean, I still need to, you know, I never beat Prime, so I would love to go back in. And... What I do not want is Reggie wearing a, a Samus pin, <laughs> being like, we have a very dear character ready to show you tonight. Shows a cinematic of Samus. And it ends up just being Samus and Fortnite, and there's nothing else. That's what I do. Reggie not want. is going to be there, apparently. You know, obviously is, not for Nintendo, yes. but he will be there. Um, <laughs> that's why we're getting Mother Three now. <laughs> oh man, there were so oh. many Earthbound rumors this year too. So I know. Uh, maybe I know. this will happen. Maybe before Thursday, a UFO is going to come and be sighted, like on public tv and everyone's gonna actually see it this time it's gonna be real you know and then that's when we're gonna get mother three <laughs> and the dogs in the street will start attacking everybody and... <laughs> that's what's gonna happen evil hippies and brain signs <laughs> uh what about what about zelda you think we can see zelda i don't think so maybe i mean they've they've historically shown a lot of zelda though in the past so it's it's been a year and a half since we've seen breath of the wild 2 yeah it's very very possible then i don't know i don't want to get my hopes and, up for and it. <laughs> jeff jeff is a big fan of yeah. zelda if they had something you know, could work a deal be interesting i mean maybe they'll give us like a little a little taste of development just a little well, just a, a little glimpse a little taste of like the yeah. world instead of just like that little trailer we have yeah. of like Probably not, though. If anything, it will probably just be DLC for Age of Calamity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, we didn't yeah. even talk about that. <laughs> well, there's not much to yeah, say. Not... Tried the demo. Wasn't a fan. Didn't pick it yeah. up. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Sames. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens. I really don't know what to think of it. I mean, I think that'd be awesome to get to get anything really out of you know any of the major franchises of nintendo would be cool or any other uh announcements for games coming out like yeah i don't know i doubt silk song yes would be forgot going. about that we talked about that the other day silk song yeah. shadow drop at game awards oh god if silk song and cyberpunk or release the same day. I just I don't know what I would do with life. <laughs> it's too much greatness at once. Yeah, that's I'm actually interested in when <laughs> when did Hollow Knight come out? I'm checking um, now. February twenty fourth. Yeah, I think it came out yeah. in February on PC or whatever. It originally came out. Came to Switch in yeah. June on yeah, E3. Yeah, June 20. 2018 so yeah so i don't know that'd be cool I mean, if we at least get an update on silk song that would be cool just even if we get like a release yeah. date or something i feel like we're due for one because um we haven't heard anything in a while oh and apparently the cuphead dlc got delayed i heard about that yeah so that's that's another thing to, to add in here understandable yeah. is what uh, it is I wasn't expecting it to come out Dude, that, this year that at this game point. Took so. so long to be developed anyway. <laughs> like, so yeah. I mean, so expected with like hand drawn twenties animation. So is that coming to the Switch also? I would imagine. I mean, it's yeah. DLC to the original game, so I would assume so. But yeah, I yeah. hope so. And the game ran great. So that's, that's, that's where yeah. I got the game. So I had it on both. <laughs> <laughs> I double dipped on that one. Although I bet it would run really well. 
PlayStation 5, yeah. but... <laughs> I doubt they'll end up giving a Microsoft game um, uh, on Game Pass, or uh, no, or it is on Game Pass, I'm sure. I doubt they'll end up doing that on, like, PS Plus <laughs> for free. <laughs> but maybe. But, yeah. So, we will see, but tune in for that on Thursday. Just a couple Hopefully of I will post this episode before the game awards so you can hear these predictions before it actually happens Yell at us about freeing <laughs> melee <laughs> so uh, well i think that pretty much wraps up this episode we got a good uh hour and a half in just about so it's not not excellent. too bad but yep and uh, hopefully we'll get one more episode in before the end of the year where we can talk about our favorite games played in 2020. Maybe not necessarily released, but... Yeah, I have not much. Yeah. I have not played much of anything that came out in 2020. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I dipped into a lot of old games yeah. this year rather than, like, new games, yeah, so... That was catching up on games from, like, 2001 and, and later with Paper Mario yeah. and all sorts of stuff. I was playing games back in the 90s. Yeah. This is 2020. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we will call that a, an episode. So, hope you listened. Hope you enjoyed. As always, leave us a comment. Leave us a review. Reach out to us on Facebook under the Cuckoo Attack Podcast. Pretty much everywhere you go. Yeah. Put a comment that says we're terrible. Just anything. <laughs> we'll take it. We will take it. <laughs> so, until then, everybody... Yeah. Stay safe, everyone, and happy gaming. All right, have a good night. Pop, pop.